Okay, we are doing respiratory number two. This is part one. So, first thing we're going to talk about is asthma. Asthma is a chronic disease. It's obstructive. So it falls in the obstructive disorders. It is basically restricted airflow in and out of lungs. Um, the bronchial tree becomes tight. The lining of the air passages swell. Um, it reduces the airflow, and thus you have a problem with um, air on inspiration and expiration. So the most common factor is allergens. There's a whole list of allergen listing on table 29.1 in your book. So other people have exertional allergy, um, asthma. So when they exercise, um, a thing that will precipitate an asthma attack, especially for these exertional activity patients, cold, dry air. Um, they sometimes say asthma has this triad of patients that have nasal polyps, they have asthma, and sensitivity to aspirin and NSAIDs is the asthma triad. I don't know how many actually have that or if that's old school, but anyway. So sometimes certain medications can trigger an asthma attack like beta blockers especially the oral dose because some beta blockers are not specific beta 1 and beta 2 if they are non-specific for the heart then they also affect the lungs emotional triggers can play an effect crying laughing anger fear you can put stress in there as well Air pollution. People that live in cities that have high air pollution also have a higher risk of an asthma attack. And then there's a, there's a very complex genetic component uh, for patients that may have asthma in the family. So why asthma makes it hard to breathe? Well, basically, um, the allergen something tips off the um, bronchial tube. So notice here on the right you have your nor normal bronchial tube. The one on the left place becomes inflamed. Um, you form mucus. It really clamps down and the patient cannot receive um, enough air. So um, it's difficult to move the air in and out. So consequently your signs and symptoms are dyspnea, hard time breathing. Squeezing is a classic sound for someone that's got asthma or at least constricted bronchioles. It's that whistling sound. Coughing because it's closing down plus you're making mucus. And obviously tachycardia because you're not getting enough oxygen plus the stress and fear. And tachypnea goes along with that well. So those are early signs of an asthma attack. Late signs of an asthma attack really become it gets worse and worse, so your chest becomes tight. You end up having a prolonged expir expiration. You can take the air in, but it's longer to take uh, blow the air out, so your expiration gets longer and longer. Tachycardia increases as well, and at some point a patient will start using accessory muscles to breathe to just try to get the air in and out. Um, it's a real panic feeling if it doesn't stop. And then the bad thing is the overinflation of the lungs and the chest. So basically you breathe air in, but it doesn't come out. So you're trapping air on the inside, so you're filling that up. So that's that overinflation. So acute attack basically is you're just low in oxygen, hypoxemia. So restlessness, increased anxiety, increased pulse rate, and blood pressure. Those are probably the first things that happen because immediately your body and your blood you know what your oxygen level is and then the other symptoms are going to come along right after so treatment is pretty simple patients that have asthma carry bronchodilators so you administer bronchodilators um, if it's really bad and it goes on a long period of time the patient either at home just for better breathing um, sometimes uses a humidifier. Um, if they're in the hospital, then they're going to get probably fluids. They're going to have um, treatments, IV treatments, um, ABGs in the hospital. You'd be able to find out what their actual oxygen level is. 
So the medications, obviously the bronchodilators, there's more than one kind, so all patients use that short-term rescue breather. So um, a good example of that is albuterol. Um, then there's long-term meds. So if you have persistent a asthma, another thing is inhaled corticosteroids. Um, common one is Flovent. Uh, fluticasone. So anybody that's got asthma, they know that they always take the short-term rescue breathers first. So you want to have that. You would never take a corticosteroid first. So the other ones, short-term rescue breathers are the first treatment. So rescue breather treatments, two to four puffs of albuterol every 20 minutes times three. A patient shouldn't be using rescue breathers all day long. There's probably other things they should be taking as well. In severe asthma, um, it can be life-threatening. So these patients that have severe asthma, they are um, have a hard time. If it's an acute attack that's really life-threatening, um, they can only speak in words, very short bursts. Um, absent breath sounds start to appear in the lungs so they become diminished. Your respiration rate is 30 minutes, 30 a minute or pulses high, accessory muscles. Wheezes can even disappear because if your chest goes silent you can't even move air. That is very life-threatening. Um, these patients need corticosteroids IV. They sometimes need intubation. Um, this is life-threatening. Wheezes usually happen on inspiratory, but when wheezes now are on expiratory as well, that is even more serious. So losing those breath sounds, expiratory wheezes, that's going to be um, even worse for the patient. Status asthmaticus is intractable asthma that cannot be brought under control. Um, so normal treatment is not working. These are the patients that are usually going to be intubated. So status asthmaticus, nothing works, intubation, steroids, IV, um, nebulizers, things of that nature.